The seminar aimed at interrogating the emerging field created by the intersection of Jewish studies, memory studies and gender studies. It introduced students to the literary and artistic representation of the Holocaust. The course focused on topics of how memory of Holocaust is inscribed, framed, mediated and performed. It had two teaching sites, Central European University and Smith College. Most class sessions were joint sessions connected through video conferencing. Every week students shared their reflections about the weekly readings in forum discussions and worked on their collaborative research projects in mixed groups involving students from both sites. The course syllabus was created to take advantage of online technologies to support student inquiry. In particular, students explore the use of the USC Shoah Foundation's Visual History Archive, the VAJ. As part of the multimedia assignment, students created two videos. They first researched video testimonies from a gendered perspective and based on the selected testimonies, they created a historical analysis in new media forms. In the second video, they reflected on researching, selecting testimonies in the VAJ, as well as on the strategies used for compressing their arguments in a comprehensible way. The course uh, Gendered Memory of the Holocaust uh, was conceptualized as a follow-up of the previous collaborative seminar with uh, the University of Minnesota, which was focusing on archiving. As every collaborative seminar, it really depends on the shared interest and the trust. With the Darcy Burkle, we have been working together in different projects in the past years, and she's a scholar of German literature. And myself, as a historian, we have got a lot to discuss in a disciplinary, interdisciplinary way. The course was designed to look at what actually the digital turn does to Holocaust testimonies and what, how the oral history, which is a, an important genre, had been transformed by the fact that uh, these testimonies are recorded or have been recorded on films and these films are accessible online. We tried to learn from our previous experience with the University of Minnesota we actually conducted uh, a pilot study about the instructional design and tried to rethink the collaborative seminar design based on those findings. The collaborative seminar, which was taught in two sites, actually not only connected different uh, students with different experiences, but also connected different uh, uh, experiences, learning from written texts, from digital testimonies, and also from uh, making films about digital witnessing. My research focuses on women's intimate experiences during the Holocaust as they have narrated these experiences in different genres, in their written memoirs and in video testimonies. And the course could provide this comparative perspective also on the level of comparing literary works with media products. And the students were reading different theoretical, mostly basic approaches to the Holocaust and together with them I could rethink these foundational approaches to my research. I took this course kind of spontaneously. Uh, it's not something that I would normally do. I don't normally take too many history courses um, and I've definitely never taken anything specifically focused on the Holocaust before. I normally study Central Asia, um, but I was really interested in the use of video testimony um, as a different medium and a, and a way to look at history. What definitely interested me was um, looking at um, a particular history that we as a historian might have looked at quite a bit, the Holocaust, through the specific gendered lens. But of course I was also attracted by the idea to work with video testimony because for my thesis I work with oral sources so I conduct interviews that I want to use and um, of course video testimony is very different from that but also I thought that would be a kind of a nice add-on to uh, the experience I'm having now with my own research. Students again were asked to work in mixed groups on their own research projects. Why we decided to keep that element 
um, in the design of this course as well was because we learned from our students from this research that we conducted in the previous course that it worked very well in perceiving each other as real in this online collaboration which ultimately could lead to uh, one online community rather than having two um, individual and separate learning communities. The fact that we started in class, we, we talk just within our class here on this side of the pond, um, and, then, and then we connected to the Smiths College students. I felt that was really beneficial, really useful. It took me several sessions to just understand, to memorize the faces, and just to get used to this experience. For me, the distance didn't really disappear until the very uh, end moment when we were having our group discussion. And then when Nina was speaking, I felt like, okay, I, this is really happening right now here. I think the idea is really great. I don't think that the technology was too big of an interruption. Um, sometimes it was really cool uh, and amazing how quickly you could forget about the TV screen. But I think uh, a group of 40 is, is impossible to, to really stimulate discussion. So. I think it was more about the numbers than the technological barriers that posed any problems to discussion. It took us quite a while to come together, but due to the repeated discussion, we actually in the end pulled together quite a nice presentation. I enjoyed more to actually apply the theories directly to an example, while some in my group were very much focused on like really going deep into the theory. And I think we very well accommodated these different approaches. We asked the students to read certain basic texts about testimony, witnessing, the age of witnessing, and also about the limits of witnessing. Then they were looking at those testimonies, digital testimonies. Watching and screening all those testimonies is extremely difficult, but this is only the first level of the understanding, the emotional level. What we try to do in this course is to understand first our uneasiness with this particular genre, and we did that encouraging and asking the students to reflect on this process themselves. And not only on the emotional level, but also on the conceptual level. So what are the consequences of their intervention into that particular field of doing digital testimonies? We developed a multimedia assignment that was important in focusing on students' historical thinking. There were strategies or techniques the students had to use when creating their multimedia assignments. And one of the techniques was to compress the argument and also by doing in a way that they don't get stuck in, um, in the simplistic representations of their ideas. It was a struggle. I mean, really, even although the software is very easy and one has might been exposed before to, to video editing and so on, but then, um, I mean, a lot of the terms might have still been not so clear. So I was always wondering, can I make this severe of a statement? So they, should I hedge more and so on and so forth? But at some point, of course, you have to finish the movie. But then you had the space in the response video to actually go back and say, you know, guys, this is why I do portrayed this issue in this and this way. I might would have done it differently. Although they were recorded testimonies and I wasn't, the interviewer, it was kind of a unique experience for me to be able to access so many interviews and I felt very kind of almost intimately or closely connected with the medium and I think um, rather than only looking at uh, secondary sources, this just really added a large dimension to the course for me. In this process I try to help the students by giving them guidance, referring to the literature, what theoretical approach they can take before actually listening to the survivor accounts. First it's vital to get the interpretative frameworks out of the literature to familiarize themselves with these tenets. But then some students even explore that there are interviews which, which not, do not comply with these existing theories and this is when when their research becomes especially 
interesting when they realize that there are some blind spots or silenced topics in the archive and through their own intervention into the archive they can especially develop their own approach to these questions. Witnessing the process of witnessing uh, and the reflection on that witnessing actually helped them to look at the, uh, the literature, what they read uh, about the witnessing and traumatic experiences, gender silences in a very different way. That was the biggest challenge, watching the VHA archives as well as editing the film, not necessarily in terms of work, of, of an assignment, but in terms of as a personal challenge. After having watched the testimonies of the, of the survivors, I felt like I knew them. It felt quite intimate, even though there was a, a separation of, I mean, there was the interviewee and the interviewer, and, and I sometimes felt that maybe the interview could have gone in a different way. When I was editing my video for the, the Eyewitness Project, I felt almost upset that I had to cut their story and I couldn't share their entire story. But I think that's, that's part of being a historian, of, of dealing with oral archives and oral testimonies especially. For example, when I was constructing my videos, unfortunately I couldn't spend uh, watching the entire testimonies. I had to apply this tagging technique look through the pieces and I understand the value of this but also I think something is lost when you uh, cut the video on small pieces and then you compile them you kind of uh, lose the connection with the entirety of the person who's telling the story and sometimes it didn't feel right for me to do this but I definitely have to reflect more At times all the assignments felt really overwhelming because there was so much, but I also felt that in retrospect I wouldn't have left out anything because I, th I felt that they all correlated and they all made sense together and as a whole, as a, as a learning curve. For example, starting with the readings and then um, posting the discussions um, about the readings and then, going, and then going from that into the class knowing that I've already read it, knowing that everyone else has read their readings, knowing their initial thoughts on it because having read their discussion posts. I think that really enhanced the classroom experience. For me the interdisciplinarity, I mean in general at CU, but also particular in this course or in this course is always an added bonus. As a historian we're familiar with gender studies and gender history in particular, but I mean having then the gender studies students who are really involved in this in their everyday um, academic life and in their research I mean, I learn a lot from them and also me coming in maybe as a historian and also others in the course have brought in a very critical perspective and I think that really makes it interesting. This course definitely changed my understanding of memorialization and um, how uh, different ideas about gender can be transmitted and how they uh, can work in various ways. Well, I, I've never thought about those issues before, so this, is, this course definitely pushed me to think about the issues I've never considered problematic before and wasn't aware that this can be problematized. Mm -hmm.